Welcome to Grey Overload, I'm Anthony and I want to take a closer look at AMD's streaming section in their Radeon drivers. AMD's drivers have evolved and they've had the streaming in their relive section for a while but now they have this th tab called streaming so it's no longer called relive it is called streaming and here is a live streaming event as you can tell I'm actually using this to record my screen right now so we'll see how much of this can be edited and work but you get to choose when you first go into streaming tab you get to go to live tr streaming that'll be selected and then you have controls one thing I wish AMD would have did in this as well is have the controls the same as the old version so in 2019 there were slightly different controls or different hotkeys if you want to start recording it was control shift R before and now it's control shift E and who knows maybe that was a typo but now it's control shift E to start a recording and this recording if you have it set up will record uh, your desktop or whatever you'd like to record and then you can also distribute it to a service so they have Facebook Mixer, Restream, Stage 10, um, Custom Stream, YouTube, Twitch uh, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce that one but there is a f uh, few different services that you can connect to the Custom Stream as well there is a chat where you can see the chats currently unavailable and this allows you to jump in and stream either a game full screen or a region that you'd like to put on one of those services or even just in this case where I'm just recording a, the desktop you're able to do that let's say you just want to be able to show a friend or two later on and you can do this now the microphone part of this you can turn on and off the microphone with control shift M and you can click on this to mute it and you can adjust the volume if you're having issues this is one place where I had to go through and adjust the volume in order to get it to uh, have a level that seems like people are able to, or I was even able to hear it on the video when it was recorded there's also push to talk if you want to have it, it, the ability to only have your voice on when you push the button which is set up for default with middle mouse button and then you can also enable and disable your camera I don't actually have a camera uh, on this system so if I enable and disable it it's not going to do anything I'm afraid to do it because I don't want to uh, mess up this recording you can also see this is disabled by default but I like to record the desktop one if I want to do videos like this or if I want to just be able to record something for somebody let's say I have a bug or a uh, failing issue of some sort in Windows or a driver I can if I get in contact with that company and they want a easy reproducible steps I can then just go with this with a voiceover and it gets them some very good data that they can easily reproduce now you can see here this is it's just saying I'm currently offline this would be your stream preview to whichever service you selected the current time I have in there and pretty basic setup but it can be useful if you are you are a game streamer now there's also a scene editor you can see down here that I only have one scene and then you can create more scenes but then in the scene editor here you can then see the indicators the camera the chat overlay and right now they're all off but if I turn the indicator here you will see the indicator is going to be up in this corner and then I can turn that back off the camera would be down in the lower corner as well and then the chat overlay could be up there which would also be where the indicator is but you can edit that and you can I think you can move these around or here it is top left top right um, is it a timer or is it not you can turn those on and off so the camera one is going to be where it is located show on the screen if you want to use a chroma key the size of the camera and location and then the chat overlay of how big it is and the font size and then you can just go through and select each scene you can add more elements so you can add an image a gift a video you can add another source there's a lot of um, interesting things here that AMD has for us to be able to go through and do um, one thing I'm going to probably do when I get off this is to see if this all works with the capture Elgato capture card I have and I've done a little unboxing video of I, w I want to use it a little bit more before I do a review of it 
but let's jump into settings because in this whole live streaming and these settings here there's still more in the settings part so as you see I'm also using the latest graphics if anybody uh, likes to care about that but then if you jump into general there is a whole recording section so sorry if I uh, jumped too fast in there but up on top there's media this is where we're on relive basically they kind of still have relive in some aspects but it's not as forefront as it used to be in the old drivers so then there's instant replay instant gifts instant games all these are disabled so this is the stuff if you want to just record some of your gameplay just for you or showing off to a friend later on and not really the recording section but then you get to the recording section and here some of the settings are actually duplicated so you got record desktop and you have show indicator both of those were over in the other uh, streaming section just in different areas then you have your borderless region capture if you'd like that um, recording profile and you can select them between low medium high and custom recording resolution I have in-game and if you're recording the desktop at this this is going to be your desktop resolution which for me happens to be 4k but you can actually uh, adjust it to whatever you'd like recording frames per second it's set at 60 and you got a choice between 30 and 60 encoding type is AVC or each H E V C. You can also do your bitrate adjustment, your audio bitrate, your audio channels, which are automatic, uh, which I'm set to automatic. That also the stereos, separate microphone track. So this is disabled, but let's say you're playing a game, you can disable, you know, your microphone to be in a separate track from your game track, which can be useful depending upon how you sound versus how the game sounds. If you're going to do a lot of post editing on it. Or even if you want to bleep out certain stuff in the post edit, this can be a great option for you. Then we also have record microphone. And here's some of the settings. People were asking me what type of settings I was doing when I was trying to get some of this recording working for the microphone. Here it is. I have it set to a microphone level of 75%. It got the record microphone enabled, push to disabled, and I got the audio boost off. Then here is the live streaming section. And I really see this as a live streaming section and the recording kind of merged together in one, right? Some of the recording stuff and some of the live streaming stuff overlap, like the microphone is going to overlap. Whereas, you know, if you're going to record to your desktop in 4K, that's something you're probably not going to be pushing out to all users on a streaming service. But you can have set your streaming profile to high here or ultra. And ultra is 1080p. You can actually go up to 4K if you want to. That's going to be pretty impressive to push that out. I guess pretty impressive, but I'm looking at my internet connection of having a max of, uh, what am I, 20 up right now. And I'm paying for more uploads. So, And with everything else that everyone else does around here, you know, Plex, etc., it pushes it uh, quite a bit. But then you have your video bit rate, your audio bit rate, your frames per second, and your stream archive. Or if you if you want to archive your stream, which a lot of people do, if they want to re-upload this to another service or do editing or do some post edits on it, this is a great way to do that. Is through that um, archive stream. So you can click yes or no. I'm just keeping the default. You also have here they have performance. Uh, this is just kind of your overlay. If you want to keep your, I don't. Uh, the overlay to hide metrics is disabled right now, but you could in theory enable this uh, and I think you can actually have it as an output as well. You'd have to verify that, but then I have game streaming So you can enable or disable it Also VR streaming. So if you want to stream your VR Or Steam, whoa, man Um Yep, so there's stream there, and you have to install for stream VR. I haven't done anything, but then that is basically it. The general tab is basically a catch-all for everything else. The streaming stuff, if you want to see the audio settings again, um, I'm using a Blue Yeti on this microphone, so you can kind of see the tuning of it. The microphone is about 10 to 12 inches away from my mouth, just so you can kind of see the distance of what the microphone level is 
based upon what I have if you need to edit settings to be able to get a little bit better audio quality um, hopefully that can help you a little bit here but let me know if you have any other questions with this streaming stuff I am not a huge game streamer I just have never done it but I do use this recording mechanism to record uh, videos to even record different bugs and stuff so I, I like it that it needs to be robust for me I haven't ran into any issues yet and I did when the driver first released to this it was very very irritating that it would constantly crash which makes it a pain to actually do something but there's also I should mention there's also some Windows game bar stuff I would uh, recommend if you're going to use the Radeon driver to be streaming or I would even say if you're using the Nvidia stuff to be streaming a different service I would disable all the Microsoft Windows game bar streaming um, stuff because it does cause issues I think that that was part of the issue here AMD needs to get more robust than that but Microsoft also needs to stop adding in stuff that's unnecessary to Windows let's get Windows stable before we start adding this auxiliary game stuff that just causes a whole bunch of issues with every cascading program that wants to do recording as well so let me know if you have any other questions with this. Let me know if you have another feature in here or something else you'd like to go through. Maybe I go through some of the performance next. But um, these videos seem to be helping people. and I, That's what I really want to do with this and being such a new driver and there being confusion around it as I'm learning it. And I still don't know all this driver perfectly yet. I want to make sure other people are being able to understand it as well because we want to have a great enjoyable experience on the PC. We don't want to be jumping through hoops for five hours just to figure out one little thing just so we can play our game and stream it. So with that, I want to thank you guys for watching. Post comments on below what you like to, what other things you like to see uh, reviewed or gone through in depth in this driver as well or anything else you'd like to see on this channel. And until next time, I want to thank you guys for watching and supporting this channel. I really appreciate you guys helping this channel grow. It's been awesome to watch, and I appreciate it a lot. And until next time, God bless, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.